Spider-Man Homecoming was a great movie, which just so happened to have one of the saddest scenes in the entirety of the MCU. We aren't ashamed to admit that when Peter Parker was trapped under that pile of rubble, our hearts absolutely broke. And we fully expect to get punched right in the feelings when Spider-Man Far From Home comes out. We'll share some of our best sad predictions, so grab some tissues and let's get started. It seems like everyone always points out the fact that Batman doesn't have any parents, but that's kind of par for the course when it comes to being a hero, it seems. Everyone knows Peter Parker's parents died a long time ago, leaving him to be raised by his Aunt May and Uncle Ben. Well, until Uncle Ben perishes tragically, but not before inspiring Peter to become a superhero. It's pretty much a tale as old as time, and one which Marvel Studios has chosen to gloss over for the most part. And honestly, we're glad they did. Although we were never sure why Peter's aunt and uncle were quite so old. His origin story is one which has been done so many times. Even non-comic book fans are familiar with it. With Spider-Man Homecoming, his parents and Uncle Ben dying and getting bitten by a radioactive spider were glossed over, because they're facts we all know about by now. And we wanted to get right into the new and interesting parts of the movie. If you're wondering if the comic books hold some special insight about Peter Parker's parents, the answer is... Barely. Spider-Man was around for six years before we got any explanation about why Peter was living with his elderly aunt and uncle. But the trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home makes us wonder if we may learn a few things about Peter's origins which have barely been touched upon in any previous Spider-Man movies. One big clue is that Nick Fury, and by extension, S.H.I.E.L.D. is involved. You see, Richard and Mary Parker weren't your average couple. They were highly trained secret agents. Richard was even recruited into S.H.I.E.L.D. by none other than Fury himself. If this is canon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it means Peter will be coming into contact with one of the few people on Earth who truly knew his parents. Would the fact that his parents worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. strengthen Peter's resolve to join up or potentially scare him away? After all, they didn't exactly have a happy retirement. Another hint that we may learn some new and inevitably heart-wrenching information about Peter's backstory occurred when we saw him packing for his trip to Europe. When he snapped his suitcase closed, you could see the initials BFP on the case. We're guessing this worn suitcase once belonged to Ben Parker, better known as Uncle Ben. If you're wondering what his middle name is, well, you're gonna have to keep wondering, because even in the canon of the comic books, he doesn't have one as far as we know. We're not on the edge of our seats waiting to find out what the F stands for, but the initials may bring up some memories and emotions within Peter. After all, based on the fact that we see him getting a new passport and he doesn't have his own set of luggage, we're guessing he hasn't traveled very extensively. Going far from home can certainly be exciting, but it can also be difficult. And despite being a superhero, Peter is still a teenager. Now that we've talked about Peter's actual biological family, let's talk about the connections he's made during his time at the MCU. During Captain America's Civil War, we saw Tony Stark call upon Peter Parker to help him out during his fight with his fellow Avenger, Captain America. Peter was adorably eager to help out his hero, and this continued over into Spider-Man Homecoming. For most of the movie, Peter was desperate for Tony's acknowledgement, let alone approval. Some people criticized the movie for feeling more like Iron Man 4 than a Spider-Man Homecoming, but others truly enjoyed seeing the connection between Peter and Tony develop. It was honestly heartbreaking when Tony came down hard on Peter after the fairy disaster and we felt proud of Peter when he turned down Tony's offer to become an Avenger. Obviously, if you've seen the trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home, you know Peter somehow survived what happened to him at the end of Infinity War. In fact, based on the bustling populace of people and the fact that we saw Nick Fury, who also vanished during the decimation, it looks as though Thanos' evil deeds have been undone. Far From Home takes place shortly after Endgame, which further lends credibility to the theory that the decimation was completely wiped from the timeline. But this doesn't mean everyone survived Endgame, as much as we hate to say it. There were a few things which happened during the trailer which made us believe we may have seen the last of Tony Stark. The first happens right in the beginning of the trailer, when Happy Hogan shows up with an oversized check at a charity event. Sure, Tony often sends Happy to take care of stuff like this for him, but look at whose name is on the check. It's not Tony Stark, but rather Pepper Potts. Why would Pepper be signing a giant check made out for hundreds of thousands of dollars if Tony was still alive? Wouldn't it be made out from Tony himself, or at least on behalf of Stark Industries? Also, at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming, we saw Tony make a pretty unromantic proposal to Pepper. It wasn't exactly a surprise to anyone, especially Pepper herself, but apparently the two are officially engaged, or were during Infinity War. 
If Tony was still alive, there's a possibility she would have been signing her name as Pepper Stark and not Pepper Potts. Of course, the wedding could have been delayed, or she could have decided to keep her maiden name. We would hate to give up such a catchy alliterative name, too. But her name on the check certainly makes it seem as though Tony is gone, along with a comment Happy made later in the trailer. Happy hasn't always been Peter's biggest fan, but it's clear he has more respect for him by the end of Homecoming. During the Far From Home trailer, he talks about Peter being alone and not having anyone to help him out. Even if Peter rejected his invitation to become an official Avenger, there is no way Peter would ever be truly alone as long as Tony was still alive. Could it be possible that Tony didn't survive the events of Endgame, and we will see Peter mourning his loss during Far From Home? It would also explain why Peter is so insistent on giving the superhero thing a break, and simply trying to take his mind off of things for a little while. You can try, Peter, but you can't swing away from your feelings, even if you do have web shooters. During his trip to Europe, it's clear Peter is not actually going to be able to relax and enjoy his time as a strictly normal teenager. Instead, he's gonna be squaring off against some serious villains. Of course, we were all excited to see Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio in the Far From Home trailer. But what about the Vulture? Michael Keaton played the villain in the previous Spider-Man movie, and he was remarkably compelling. Adrian Toomes was just a guy trying to make a living, when his perfectly legitimate business was shut down completely without warning. Struggling to get his bills paid, Toomes resorted to a life of crime, much as comic book fans know, ultimately doesn't pay. While he definitely was a villain, it was hard not to have empathy for the guy, who was clearly a loving father and husband. At the end of Homecoming, he even did Peter a solid by not revealing his secret identity. And even if you weren't touched by the Vulture's struggle, you had to feel bad for his daughter Liz. She was a kind, bright girl who seemed to have everything going for her. And then her father was imprisoned, and she was pulled out of school and her whole life was flipped upside down. This wasn't a movie where a purely evil villain was defeated and everything was magically better! And that was part of what made Homecoming so compelling. But now, Michael Keaton is said to be reprising his role in Far From Home, and we're wondering how that's going to work. How is he going to be involved in this movie? And is he going to be a friend or a foe of Spider-Man? We love a villain with compelling and, yes, tragic backstory, and we wonder if Marvel will give Mysterio one. In the comic books, he starts out as Quentin Beck, an obscenely talented special effects artist, who just isn't getting the recognition he clearly deserves. He tries his hand at acting, but his looks aren't quite up to snuff, and neither is his patience. Striking out on your dream is pretty sad. And in this case, it's also adequate motivation for a career in being a villain. But things didn't start out that way. In fact, Mysterio originally wanted to take Spider-Man's place as a costumed hero. He spent a lot of time studying him and adjusting his impressive array of gadgets accordingly. Mysterio is such a great villain in the comic books because he's so well matched to Spider-Man's unique talents. We know how touching the story of Peter Parker becoming Spider-Man has been so far in the MCU. One of the reasons Spider-Man is so popular is because he is an average person who fell into an extraordinary situation and is trying to make the best of it. In a way, that's Mysterio's journey as well, even if he went about it in a much more dangerous and much less less benevolent way. These two characters have developed parallel to one another in many ways over the course of the comics, and this is a poignant dynamic we may see played up on the big screen when Far From Home comes out. There might also be a few decisions which Marvel didn't intend to be sad, but end up having an effect on fans. In Homecoming, we saw that Peter had a crush on Liz Toomes, and their romance was pretty sweet, and perhaps most importantly, it felt organic and believable. This is more than we can say about a lot of other romances in the MCU. It didn't seem like it was just tacked on because a superhero simply can't be single, and it factored into the plot in a meaningful way. It's clear in the trailer for Far From Home that Peter is going to be spending some time flirting with his classmate Michelle, who also goes by MJ. Yeah, MJ, Mary Jane, real subtle stuff. During Captain America Civil War, many fans criticized the emphasis on Aunt May's appearance, and Marvel did not have any more chill with this during Homecoming. And what do you know? During Far From Home, we were again reminded that actress Marisa Tomei is a beautiful woman. Thanks, we wouldn't have figured it out otherwise. Now, a subplot involving Aunt May dating would really be something which would really make us sad. Just think about the upcoming movie, Spider-Man the Stepfather, as Peter struggles to adjust to his new life with his Aunt May and his uncle, Happy Hogan. 
Well, after you're done wiping the tears from your eyes, tell us what tragic events you expect to see unfold in Spider-Man Far From Home. And if there's any that we might have missed, when you're finished crushing the spirits of your fellow Marvel fans, you can subscribe to CBR for more MCU content. Thanks for watching.